Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to Losers Round 2 of the 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament. I am Shadow Fury 33, bringing you casts from that round. So let's just review what's gone on in the tournament so far. So we have. We've had many games being played. The last we saw were Gold vs. Monkuki and Cyber Night Pony vs. Kitan. So now we're seeing the. Well. Monkuki and Kitan will be playing in Losers Round 3, which I probably will be able to do tomorrow. But today is Losers Round 1, so we're going to see who's going to play against them. Vermine and J-Raccoon are playing for the ability to play against Monkuki and Sheridan and Haiku, likewise for Kitan. Starting out with Vermind and J-Raccoon, that will be on Kratoria. So, let us begin. Vermine starting in the southwest corner of the map. Jaracoon is starting in the northeast corner of the map. Vermind not, hasn't quite chosen a species yet. Jaracoon has chosen to play Grekim. Vermine probably going to... I'm thinking Vekir, but we'll find out sooner or later. Anyway, Jaracoon is actually doing something. Let's see what he's up to. He is not up to anything too special, but he is certainly getting himself going. Normal start. Everything pretty much as usual. And... Opening Octo, see, probably going to be used for scouting. That is a typical thing to do, get your Octo up, used for scouting. And it looks like he is not going to be... Not going to be directly sending it to become a resource processor. Probably just setting up this time so he can echo it out from here. Vermine, on the other hand, has chosen Vekir. Unclear what he's planning on doing. Probably going to move forward with his inventory to scout out a bit. Now, this map being this map, we've seen this map before. We've seen how Kratoria plays with the teleporters in the corners, and admittedly neither player is playing CISO, but still. Still something to think about. There's a lot that could be going on here, and both players have to bear in mind that those teleporters are pretty important. It looks like Direct Scout is going in from J Raccoon, and Vermin on the other hand is setting a scout up to the well, northwest. He wants to make sure that J Raccoon isn't up to anything too tricky. Possibly going to go use the teleporters to scout afterwards with those units, because it is actually going to be faster. It's faster to go to the teleporters and teleport over to your opponent's base with your scouts than it is to walk directly. I mean, it's just simple simple maths. I mean, you just go down the side, and it's going to be... This is a square map, so it's going to be about 1.4 times shorter than going along the diagonal. Going to be exactly root 2 times shorter, in fact. But... Well, not exactly, because there are a few perturbations, but given a perfect square, of course, it would be. Well, given a perfectly flat surface in the shape of a square, it would be. But, no matter, Jerakun has been attacked by the Oddbot at the 3-minute mark, and he's not actually set up to defend against this. In fact, he's not even paying that much attention this time. Jerakun, sorry, Jerakun is attacking. Furmine hasn't been prepared for this time. Jerakun probably just scouting out, likely to... No, actually, it looks like he is preparing for a pretty powerful attack. Four Octos up, connected to the Arctic has no signs of becoming resource processors anytime soon. And an Octopod coming on top of them. I think he's going to go for a rush with the Octos and Octopods. And Vermind, on the other hand, doesn't appear to have started to set up... Well, she doesn't have the found money to set up foundations, but he doesn't appear to be intending to set up a bunch of foundations. Easy defense against Octos like this is foundation followed by Zion Veer build, but then... That's more for an early stage rush. Admittedly, this rush will probably be coming in somewhere closer to the four minute mark. At which point vehicles would actually be somewhat useful. The Zion Pulsar would sort of come in handy, but Zion Veer with foundation support is still pretty powerful. Now Jerakun is about two minutes down from here. Rechecking what's going on, and it looks like he is going to attack with that Octo once again, as he had before. I'm still surprised he's not using the teleporters for this purpose. I mean Yes, it would have his stuff get shown, but it would also mean he'd probably arrive about 30 seconds sooner, maybe even a minute sooner, than he had before. Looks like the travel time is somewhere along the lines of about... Okay, starting at the 314 mark is when he actually sends out that attack, but the travel time does appear to be somewhere along the lines of... Let's actually see, we can find out. The travel time would... Oh, no, I can't find out because I'm not the one playing. But the travel time appears to be somewhere on the order of two minutes, so it would likely shave off about 30 seconds or so. 30 or 40 seconds. Doesn't matter though, Vermind is still actually not preparing that early. I'm a little bit surprised at this. I think he's, I mean, he is getting his Zion Veer. That is good. He does have that set up. Not yet getting foundations for support. Looks like he's primarily using them for economic construction. 
And he is getting a proxy foundation near the teleporter, though he has broadcasted his Shin Veer's presence near the teleporter. Possibly a mistake, not sure if Jerakun is paying attention to that point. No, he's not paying attention to that point in time. He will eventually find out, and it looks like he may in fact be going... It looks like he is possibly going for an Echo Rush. Admittedly, this is still two minutes down from when he had originally rushed. And it looks like that rush is dealing a fair amount of damage. Whether or not it is final remains to be seen. It's a minute and a half into the future. Anything can change in the last five minutes. And Jerakun, speaking of which, jumping back about four minutes. We'll see what he's planning on doing. I do see that he's not actually building a lot. His construction is... Oh, it's not marked. It... Hmm. Okay, apparently per generation does not count as construction. How odd. That seems like a bug. Anyway, that aside, easy to fix regardless. And it looks like very much so the... Let's check the present... That rush appears to be still going on. Nothing has actually changed with the time waves. And in fact, Vermine taking even more damage. He is very much investing in this northwest corner of the map. Basically abandoning the southwest corner. Even moving his Zion Veer pair out of there. Totally invested in this proxy. So Jericoon's going to have what will appear to be an easy victory from here. But unbeknownst to him, or at least if he wasn't paying attention to the fact that the Shin Veer is over here. He's going to have to deal with some proxy vehicles jumping in through this teleporter. Straight into his base. Probably his iron pulsers, and it's probably going to be undefended, although we will see. J. Raccoon appears to be committed to this rush. Nothing much has actually changed. He still seems to be building up that rush, although... You know what? Maybe I'm wrong. It would appear that he's actually gone and decided to go for... No, he's echoed it out! The green time move is carrying that the rush is no longer happening. J. Raccoon instead focusing on defense. I mean, I'm guessing he probably realized that he was going to a base where he's probably have to worry about proxies. He probably has to worry about... And he does indeed. I mean, this is the right move. Jericho is making the absolute correct decision right now in keeping this Octopod home for defense. In fact, he should make a couple more. But this is exactly right. He's doing this correctly because... I mean, that rush, he probably figured out... Either he figured out just because metagame on this map or figured out because he saw Vermine's base was basically undeveloped that he's not, the Verminer should say, is not developing his base. He's developing something else. So, J. Raccoon is preparing, but I wouldn't say he's prepared yet, and actually at the 603 mark, not, hasn't quite updated those preparations, but he does have an Octopod, it does have Reef support. He can use another Octopod, he needs to actually get the money for it. Only 12 QP at the moment, needs 44. Once he gets that, it should be a bit more difficult for Vermine to get him, but on the other hand, Vermine is going to be getting some air units. He is getting Zion Tertia and Zion Pulsar, probably getting some Shin Tertia as well, and he is teleporting in at the 650 mark a little bit late. He should be going near the unplayable pass before doing this, but he's going to go for it anyway. I think he's going to pull it off, too. That Zion Tertia is... Well, it's hard to say. The red time move is really going to make the difference. The Zion Tertia is not being set up to tank, so what, where he teleports is the biggest question. If he teleports further in the back, it's going to be harder for the Octopod to get there before serious damage is dealt. But I think that Jerakun will still have a chance to defend against this. Jerakun, on the other hand, further back, is building up some Octos for defense. He does have advanced treasures coming up, so likely Aryans are going to be coming up fairly soon. And it looks like the Octos are actually being used to scout out. One of them scouting out towards the northwest and one towards the southeast. Neither of them going for the teleporters, mind you. Both of them going for the bases near the teleporters. Not a terrible idea, but still, it's not going to apply. Vermind is not expanding there. And J. Raccoon, like I said, he has a defense set up, but it doesn't appear to be enough, and this Octopod is not really prepared for the teleportation. I think J. Raccoon may have forgotten that neutral teleporters exist on this map. And it is something that can be easy to forget. It's the, this is the only map that, or one of the few maps that has it. Certainly the only 1v1 map that has or the only two-player map that has it. I think the other maps that have it... I'm trying to remember if there are other maps that have it. If there are, they would be four-player maps, which admittedly you can play with two people, but they aren't in the tournament rotation, that's for sure. So Vermind is getting more set up. He's getting more Zion Pulsar, so he has not actually sent an attack out yet. That's good. He is waiting for the unplayable fast edge. He is trying to attack as close as possible to that to prevent Jericho from, be able to re from being able to react to his attack. That is important. 647 mark, right as the time wave crosses along, he's... No, he's hanging out here. Not quite sending out yet, just continuing to build up. And Jericho, on the other hand, 
getting his economy going. I think he might be getting a little cocky. Does have a Pharopod, though, and this is why I was wondering if Vermine had any Shin Turchers, because they need... He needs him to detect that Pharopod. And if he doesn't have that, that's going to be a thorn in his side during his attack. Legal class coming up as well, so Jericoon very heavily teching up. Looks like he's going to try to get Octoligos very... just immediately. I mean, Noah's that Vecchio is Vecchio, but I think at this point he's probably... I mean, he already had his defense set up. I think he was already wise to the prob probability of being rushed. Now, like I said, Vermind is lulling him into a false sense of security. As we can see, Vermind doesn't have a lot of stuff to deal with. I mean, if he attacks the base right now, it's going to deal a ton of damage, but J. Raccoon is clearly getting overconfident. He's he is patrolling a bit, he does have some defenses, but his, there aren't folks on the back side of his base where... I mean, the teleportation can get right into the base. The teleporters aren't going to teleport them off to the side, it's going to get right into the base. So, the Octopod and Zebby are going to have a bit of a delay in getting back there. Now, with Lego class, Octoligos are likely, and with bad timing, we'll see Vermine does actually start to attack at the 8th, 8th 10 mark, and 747 mark, this is when he started to actually send the teleport in. Jumping back just to review this, and... Oops. And he is apparently going to be going for this and actually being a little bit taking a little while to do so. But yes, there he is. 814 mark. The attack has started. And the Farpod is not cloaked. I mean, admittedly, Jerakun is not paying attention at this point in time, but still the Farpod is not cloaked. Though Vermine knows there's a Farpod now. I'm not sure he's gonna build a Shin Turchel. Let's check his base. No Shin Turchel yet. He can if he wants to, but he hasn't yet. Jerakun, on the other hand, could get chronoporting any second now if he wants to, and and is not doing so. Not, not surprising, but the Farpod has indeed cloaked itself. Let's see how the battle plays out this time around, with the Farpod cloaked instead of uncloaked. And Jericho to the Octopod in position. The Octopod going down very quickly, though. The splash damage destroying two of the Zion Pulsers. And heavily damaging a third. Farpod completely unaffected, but at the same time, the Progen Triad going down. The forces are not really paying attention to anything other than what they can just hit from directly next to them. Vermind has also... Jump back to re-micro this. 828 mark once again. We see that Vermind is focus firing down those progen triads. Trying to avoid hitting the because Doesn't want to design pulse or hurt itself. But the Arcticus trying to also rebuild. Jericho trying to just desperately rebuild some of his forces. Not sure. Did he actually? I think he did actually try to produce a unit there. But it doesn't matter. That base is pretty much going down. Jericho on the other hand can fly his Arcticus out of there. Can get himself out of the way. And his Farpod is defending fairly well, but he has lost a lot. Now, bear in mind, the Zion Torture is not, in fact, cloaked effectively. The Arcticus is detecting it, but that is still a lot of damage being dealt. I mean, Vermind has annihilated Jerrigan's base. Jerrigan now has to spend about... Well, he has to spend at least 120 Liquor Crystal to rebuild his base. And that's not to say anything about the Shin Turchers coming in, the Teth Pulsar as well, that we'll be able to get rid of this Farapod without too much issue. And I should point out that Skip Teleport does not exist. Everything was based on that neutral teleporter, so they can't easily jump back. Like, those forces could not have escaped out of there. They were going on a suicide mission. That was that was an all-or-nothing mission. And admittedly, the result was most. <laughs> Seppi being built, so Jerakun is recovering from this. It's still going to be expensive. It's still going to be a bit slow. It's definitely going to slow down his chronoporting tech by about a minute or two from when he probably would have wanted it. And Vermind setting up a second attack. He has quite a few infantry forces in there, actually. I'm a bit surprised at that. Not totally surprised. They are going to be detectors, and... It's just... Still, I just guess spare detectors. Not a terrible idea. But going in, probably going to actually foundation creep. That's the only reason I can see why I'd bring Shin Beer in there. Because the Shin Beer can build foundations, and that would mean getting foundation support. Let's see what he does. Oh, interesting. Going not quite into the base, and walking in instead, I... I do expect Foundation support to be coming up, but the Shinveer are getting killed quite quickly. Teth Pulse are not in range to deal with the Farpod yet, and actually getting distracted by the Octos. One Shinveer is left, and the Foundation should be coming up very shortly. But, it looks like Vermine getting a little bit distracted, running out of orders, running out of Chrono Energy. He only deal, he only issue about, well, three orders in the moment. Jumping back to the Implable Past Edge to try to deal with this. A dome being set up to help with the defense effort. Jerakun is, let's see, from his end, building an Octopod, getting, he has a dome up, that dome is going to be fairly useful, although it does pretty much just get rid of the Zion Veer, which, 
at this point. The Tenth Pulsar has gone into range. Shinveer is still alive. However, the Octopod is taking it out, and the Foundation has been built. There we go. The Shinveer has fulfilled its primary purpose. Getting the Foundation creep up for healing. Keeping this Tenth Pulsar alive, actually, quite a lot longer than it probably should have been. And... The only downside right now is that Vermine needs to teleport in more forces, and he has more forces to teleport in, but these foundations can only go so far, and there's only the Shin Church supporting them. Admittedly, against Octopods, the Shin Church is probably going to do okay, but still, more support is necessary. Now, Vermine, jumping back to the 12-14 mark, he... Well, he's sending in some more units, sending in another Teth Beer. Not really that useful. No air units are in play at the moment. And... At this point, I would expect these Shin Churches to be sent over, and possibly Zion Veer, but he's just sending an infantry one at a time. I'm, I am rather surprised at this. And this Shin Veer coming in as well, I don't know if that's going to go in for more foundations or what. It is in here, and it's dead. That really didn't last long. I'm not sure what the point of that Shin Veer was. He really needs to be sending in. There we go. There's the Shin Churches I was looking for. And that is going to be quite a bit of damage dealt there. Now, these Shin Churches are... Now well, the brand new Shin Church is not like this one, which... Actually, I just noticed the Shin Church looks fairly damaged despite the fact that it's fully healed up. But, that's not really important. What's important is... No, it's fine. Never mind. Just my mistake. It is, in fact, fine. Just the angle of the light. The trick of the light. But what's not a trick of the light is the fact that the Autobots are dying, and their foundations are actually also going down. Looks like Jericho has started to focus on the foundation somewhat, but even with firepower he has. It's not enough, and I think Vermine has this game. No, Vermine does have this game. I can't. I don't even just think it. It is definitely true. Jericoon going to throw in the towel, and there he goes! Jericoon has surrendered. That is game. And I gotta point out, that's also match. Because Jericoon actually surrendered I mean, forfeited the entire... Oh, for goodness sakes. Sorry. Obs being obs again. It's the one thing I don't like about this game, or this program sometimes, is that it does... Have a tendency to... There we go. Mess up window capture. So, as, as I was saying, Jericoon did forfeit that last match, and that is... Sorry, he forfeited the next match. So, that is 2-0 for Vermine. Vermine will be the one going against Monkuki, and we will have Sharadan versus Haiku next. So, stay tuned for that. That will be up in just a minute or two.